Michelle's a, a painter and a writer. Uh, in early 2019, having uh, identified um, a deep human need to celebrate lightness, uh, simplicity, and joy, uh, she began painting our rivers, parklands, and rural jewels. Uh, she now creates uh, buoyant landscapes to lift the spirits, and we really, really need that right now. Welcome, Michelle. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. <laughs> Sorry for almost skipping over you. I didn't do it on purpose, I swear. That's okay. We got it. <laughs> so uh, tell me about your current uh, body of work. My current body of work is really highly, highly informed of about my surroundings. So in 2018, the later part of 2018, we moved from our 20 year old home um, onto an area that overlooks American River Parkway. And at that point, I hadn't been painting anything really I had realistic. I had been focusing on my writing, which was poetry, and my background, which is in human behavior and doing um, and I was doing these abstracts with resin on them and, and incorporating my writing. And when I moved there, I went, now what? I've lost where I'm gonna, where I pour my resin. And so I took up oil painting. And I had a friend who came and was overlooking the view and said, I would paint that all day. And I thought, no, I won't. And now I am. <laughs> well, that's awesome. That makes sense. I mean, seeing them. See, having that view, it seems like it lends itself to it. Um, and I was, so, kind of, I was kind of getting um, heavy with the human behavior part of it, uh -huh. because as you know, we really kind of need some lightness and joy and, you know, right now especially. And so I thought, you know, what better way to serve in the art community than create a place for people to just kind of take a breath and say, ah, Okay, life's do, not. Do you, um, since, since you're also a poet, do you see your artwork as poetry? You associate it with poetry. Do you approach it like poetry in, a, in I, some respects? Um, I did when I, I did when I was doing the abstracts more so, but now I still see like color as a way to inform emotion and, um, my landscapes are not realistic or hyper realistic by any stretch of the imagination. They're more about um, the feeling of the place and, and the joy that the place brings. And if that means that I'm painting a, a river bluff, which a lot of times it'll be a, a river bluff and the, the um, land underneath it. And I take all kinds of liberties to make those colors uh, you know, pull emotional strings and get respond, elicit those kind of responses rather than staying true to what the eye sees. So you're really capturing the essence of what you're seeing. You're not really getting like a, a photo, you're not searching for a photo of it. You're trying to get a, a feeling about it. Right, a feeling about it and a, and a lightness to it. And this is beautiful and it makes me happy and I hope it makes you happy. And let's just all take a breath and and be happy for a minute. And those are your paintings behind you, correct? They are. Those are beautiful. And is that is that is that a fan back there? Is that yeah. is that like that? Give us an idea of the uh, the scale. Um. Yeah, that is a fan back there. So awesome. the, the, fan, the fan's probably twelve inches high, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, so what what is your your process when you paint? Like, how do you how do you uh, we know how you get to the images, but how do you how do you actually apply your paint and in, in that process in that respect? Um, I'm painting in oils. I mix everything. Um, I have about seven tubes of paint. Mix every color that I could possibly need from those seven tubes. Um, I do a lot of layering, like the land and how the land has a history. I like my paintings to have that depth and that history. So there's some of that shows through the back, some of it's over. You can, I, I like to really sometimes highly texturize things with the brush strokes. Right. And um, so I'm doing just, you know, layering, scraping paint, applying paint, um, listening to music. I'm there with you. I can't do anything while I'm listening to music. 
No, and the music is, if you're prepping canvases and grounds, that's a different music than when you're painting the painting, you know? Yeah, I, I, I totally understand that. Um, so what's, what's been your, your favorite project or uh, commission from the past couple of years? Well, actually, that goes back to when I was doing the poetry and it was actually showing up in the painting. And I don't know if we have the ability to screen share here, but I was doing these totems and they were like eight inches by 60. And they had these cascading haikus about collective behavior and, and how we create the collective consciousness by what we think and what we do and how we behave. And so it was this huge installation um, that I did and it was a uh, resin finish and it went off to a corporate client, but I thought that it held together very well and it expressed what I was trying to say very well. But once I said it so many times, I, I, was, kind of, I was kind of done and ready to move on. <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing commissioned work um, opposed to just doing something for yourself. Um, what are those experiences like? What's, what's the difference or what's the similarities? Is there a difference or do you feel like an extra kind of pressure? For the? You know, I used to, when I did commissions, I would just say, I'll make something and if you like it, you, you can purchase it. Otherwise I'll put it in my inventory and uh, offer it to anyone. But now um, I'm, finding, especially when, with COVID, uh, I, I started getting a lot of commission work and people wanted things to look at in particular spaces. So I would actually go into the client's space and work with them. And again, like I said, I layer so much. I can make changes. Um, you were talking to Susan earlier about showing unfinished work. Uh, <laughs> and that's one of the kind of, you know, strange places where you're really trusting your client. I'm going to show you this half in the middle, ugly place painting and ask for your feedback of, am I going in the direction that you expect? And so that's what I do. I'll send them something, you know, that's in process. And uh, usually it, they just let me go with it. And, and that's, that's lovely. I've had people that have, you know, can we have another, bright pop of orange because people seem to like that bright pop of orange. In <laughs> orange. So, uh, you know, that's, that's been good and, and it's been easy to do the commissions lately. And I am so nice. grateful for them. They're keeping me very busy during this, you know, shutdown. Well, that's awesome. I mean, I, I mean, that's just a, a question I had because it's, I could, I could see it being kind of like when you're, when you're about to show it to somebody, especially somebody who's paying you uh, for it, there's an expectation. And so having that expectation of something that they want and you're showing them, but it's not what they want yet. How are they to receive that information? You know, like I, I, I can only imagine uh, the feeling of about to show them when you're about to show them and be like, but you don't understand though. It's not done yet. It's, it's going to look like the way you want, you know, <laughs> but they've been really cool about it. And yeah. they're like, yeah, go with it. And I'm like, but I want you to love it. <laughs> I'm going to love it. So it's been, it's been really good. That's awesome. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, your, your opinions look awesome. Um, uh, is your work included in any uh, current or future missions coming up? Um, right now I'm at art house. This is where nice. I am right now. Um, so this is my studio here, um, which is open. Uh, I'm also, being um, represented by Fire and Rain Gallery in Folsom. Nice. And, uh, I should have work in Elliot Fouts in December. Nice. So, um, yeah. These are all like awesome places. So yeah. people who, who aren't familiar with the art scene and you're just starting to get into it, uh, those are some really quality places. Uh, the Art House also, that's on Art Street, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's an awesome place too. Anybody, uh, you know, after the COVID's over, um, make sure to go around those areas because there's a lot of cool studios there and meet people like you know. Um So how can people find your work after the studio tours are, are over? Well, you can find me at R Street um, or those galleries. Um, you can also find me on 
Instagram at Michelle Andrus Art. Uh, you can find me on my website, michelleandrus.com. Uh, I just set up my e-commerce site because that's what we do during COVID. And um, <laughs> I started working with HFA Gallery to do some prints. Um, and I'm currently selling those prints and donating some money to Feeding America in order to help some people get, get fed uh, during this hard time. Michelle, you're busy. I like to stay busy. Yeah, you, you, do, a, you do a lot of stuff. Um, I'm surprised you've never met before. Um, or maybe we have, I don't know. Everybody that I'm interviewing, it seems like I've met them before, but we, I'm not sure if we did or not. But, it's that, um, it's that old artist soul. <laughs> so uh, hopefully uh, sooner than later, uh, we'll, we'll meet. I can look at your pieces in person. Uh, awesome talking to you, Michelle. Thank you. See you later.